Oop, this is Red, and this is my tutorial on multi-leaf springs. Alright, if you take a look at this here, you can see the general arrangement of what I've got. Got a large, big, black, thick trailing arm. Holds the wheel in place. I'm just fucking around right now, showing you the constraints. And I've got multiple leaf springs stacked onto each other. Each leaf spring is welded to the base and welded to itself. Or, I'm sorry, to the other leaf spring. And I actually used an axis to the base and an axis to each other to help reinforce it. Because axes are actually stronger than welds because fuck logic, that's how source works. Okie dokie, moving on, we have an elastic. I know you know what those little shock absorber things do. That's the rope. I just have it as a demonstration. I would never actually use that arrangement because I'm not tired. I would use stretch only. After that, you can see we have a little bit of movement, and then it grabs multiple leaves. First little bit of movement here is just straight on the elastic shock absorber. That first tiny bit of movement helps to dampen overall oscillation and adds to having a little bit greater travel with the suspension. After you get a little bit up, it's going to actually ride properly on the leaf that it's supposed to. Here you're going to see me holding it in place. And I'm moving it up and down. That blue rope is actually from wheel center to wheel center plus a little bit upwards. And you can see it kind of a little bit bending that first leaf spring. I'll freeze it. See? You got a little bit of movement without the elastic. And that's when it engages the leaf spring right there. So it's just a very short offset with the rope, non-rigid, to allow it to engage. Then, after that first one's engaged, it engages the second one, as you can see here. So, to make a long story short, you are using non-rigid ropes with a little bit of vertical offset, so you do, with precision alignment, one click, two clicks on the wheel, both of them mass center in my case, that's what I usually do, with a, a slight offset upwards on Z. I have on this one, I believe, an offset of three for the first road wheel, for the first leaf spring, and six for the second, so that as it goes through its travel, it will... Yep, see, there's the second leaf spring. That's the one that the red is connected through. As it goes upwards through its travel, it'll engage progressively more leaves. With more leaves being engaged, the suspension will drastically increase its stiffness, meaning that you get the same amount of travel depending on your load. Granted, not a whole lot of travel. But you can have a suspension which operates pretty effectively over a wide variety of loads. This is fucking useful as shit for trucks. And for anything where you throw a lot of different types of things on it. Alright, I'm just sticking around right here. You can see, bounces in place. It's really jiggly. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. I'm going to drag it around. You can kind of watch it. The base on this one is 1,000 kilograms. The leaves are too far offset. What the fuck was that? That's because another thing I forgot to mention. Make sure your leaves are no collided to the world by using a negative 180, 180, three axis ball socket. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, that's where I put a proper elastic on it. And of course, precision alignment doesn't show up in Source Recorder. Because I didn't direct for it because I wanted to get some decent frame rate. This is what happens when you try to get quality people. These leaves are the same weight, by the way, in case you were wondering. As you can see, it's a pretty stable suspension at, I think this is a thousand kilograms. So you have basically a one ton plate. Oh, it's 500. The leaves are 50, which is way heavier than normal. I normally would offset them closer to the wheel itself. Um, I don't know if you have a whole lot of experience, people watching this, with leaf springs. If you do not, the range from the leaf to the road wheel greatly increases the amount of weight of the leaves. As does accessing it. Accessing it to the base will increase the strength of the constraint. I will do another tutorial on that because that's all into triaxial welds, which are fucking weird as shit. So here I'm increasing the weight of the vehicle's uh, base to 750 kilograms and to 1,000. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of sag. There's a little bit. It does sag. But the suspension is still relatively level, even at 1,000 kilos. A full ton of weight. It's very level. And yet, as you'll see, decreasing the weight, dropping it down to as much as 250, 
You can see right here it's riding on the elastic mostly in the first leaf spring. Suspension is still perfectly capable of fighting. <coughs> oh, it's capable of coughing and ripping my appendix stitches. Lovely. 125, suspension is still perfectly good. You can see, smooth over all of the various loadings in terms of weight. That is the benefit of leaf springs. You can't get that with hydraulics really without manually adjusting them. And you really can't get that with elastics in any way. You can using stretch onlys and offsets, but it's much more difficult to tweak. This here, I think, yeah, there you go, 250. We have a more of a proper sag now. Still level. So yeah, you have a vehicle capable of handling, as you'll see later on this, anywhere from 125 to 1250 kilos of weight. So up to 10 times its own weight. Fantastically useful for trucks. I don't know if I'm going to put the whole thing up here. Yeah, I'm not going to bother. This is also useful for tanks. It's also useful for really anything. Um, one of the downsides is that you do ride a little bit rougher. Because of the fact that some of the suspension's travel has to be used, you have to basically isolate different areas of the suspension travel for different levels of weight and loading. The suspension is pretty rough. If you Not super rough, but it's kind of stiff. If you've ever ridden in, for instance, an unloaded pickup truck in the back, you will notice that they are very rough. This is the reason for it. Personally, I have a pickup truck, so I can definitely say that they're rough. Thump, 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 thump. All over the potholes, everywhere. The second benefit thing I wanted to also mention is having the elastic engaged before the first leaf spring. You can do this with a monoleaf design, but you do not have to. You can do it with multi-leaf, but you do not have to. I personally prefer to, because that little extra bit of travel, when you're coming over a bump or rut, that gives you a little more space for shock dampening. That shock dampening will increase your ride quality greatly. And the increase in ride quality is really what we're after. Not to mention it also gives you more articulation, which is good since a lot of vehicles which have leaf springs are usually trucks, tracked carriers, tanks of the slow kind. And you need a lot of travel with them in order to handle the sort of difficult terrain at low speeds, which they're usually well accustomed to. Alright. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If not, fuck off, I don't care. See you, peeps.